Standing majestically, the Chinatown Gateway serves as an entrance to Portland, Oregon's Old Town Chinatown. It was built by architects in Taiwan and shipped to Portland. It continues to be one of the largest Chinese gates of its kind in the United States. Also an important gem in Chinatown is the Portland Chinatown Museum. Its founders recently explained why the museum plays an important role in American society. So welcome to the Portland Chinatown Museum. Our main exhibit, or our main gallery, is the Beyond the Gate exhibit, which is a, as it says there, a tale of Portland's historic Chinatown. And this is what we're proud of, and uh, this tells the, port the history of, a brief history of the Chinese in the city of Portland, Oregon and talk about the coming of the Chinese to Oregon, to California, and working on the railroads. The Chinese not only came to Portland, but they also uh, spread out all across Portland looking for gold in the many of the mining camps on, on the eastern side of, of Oregon, and moving up from California, and then also in the southern Oregon here, areas here. And we know that the Chinese were in Portland in 1851 because we have a, uh, a picture here uh, that shows the hot wall uh, laundry. Chinese Americans faced discrimination. This exhibit here is of the Bowen uh, Mercantile Store, mm -hmm. and it uh, predates the 18, uh, 1890s. It was in old Chinatown. And then uh, when the Chinese were forced out of Old Chinatown, which was south of Burnside, this mercantile st uh, store moved to north of Burnside, primarily because of the creation of the Lewis and Clark Exposition in 1904-1905 that brought a lot of East Coast investors looking for opportunities to invest in the West Coast because the Chinese could not own the property. A lot of Old Chinatown was bought up. So the Chinese moved to New Chinatown, where we are today. They were not able to own property in the early days. And even when the restrictions were lifted, they could not buy homes in certain areas. They also couldn't get certain jobs, despite having college degrees. My grandmother's discrimination was when she bought a new house in 1935 in Portland. Uh, the, the, the neighbors were upset but uh, there was nothing anybody could do about it. That's the discrimination she faced. Uh, my father, discrimination, my father was educated to be a CPA. Two years apprenticeship was required, but no CPA firm would have him as an apprentice. So he offered to work two years for no salary, and, and they said no. So. What could he do? Discrimination in my generation, still housing, jobs, promotions, uh, attitudes, but uh, I rose above that by creating my own, my own career and my own, create my own problems and I create my own solutions. So I've cut off the the threat of discrimination by being my own. The founders of the museum see it as a valuable resource that can help people understand the history of Chinese Americans, including the discrimination they faced and contributions they made. However, visitor numbers have dropped by around 80 percent from 2020 to 2021, not only because of COVID-19, but the social problems Portland faces, including increasing homelessness. Portland Chinatown is a shell of what it used to be. Even though it, the population was much smaller, it was still a very, very vibrant community. There were lots of restaurants, um, businesses, shops. Uh, I had playmates uh, who lived in, there were still families living in Chinatown, so I had playmates from there, and there were the churches. Well, it, it was kind of a social center for me. I loved Chinatown. I went to Chinese school there, and when my parents said Chinese New Year, they would go to banquets. It was a very lively place to, you know, in my younger years, but it's not like what it is now. Around 1900, Portland had the largest Chinatown in the United States, second only to San Francisco. 
I lived uh, two and a half blocks from here for 19 years before I moved out of, out of Chinatown. And uh, in those days, there were dozens and dozens of families living down here in Chinatown. Whereas right now, I can't think of one family living down in Chinatown anymore. Over the decades, Chinese Americans have moved out of the Chinatown ghetto and into more affluent neighborhoods. New Asian immigrants also prefer to open their businesses elsewhere. COVID-19, Black Lives Matter protests that at one point turned violent last year, and anti-Asian violence also affected local businesses and people's willingness to visit Chinatown. Even after vaccinations ended shutdowns, and many of the parts of Portland returned to normal, Chinatown still suffers. It's very important to me, even though I'm not a historian, that uh, history um, is always there. It just depends on how you interpret it. But that this history does exist and it needs to be in the conscious of uh, um, all of the community. Well, Portland, it's uh, one of uh, very few earliest Chinese uh, community was in the United States. So we need to preserve that uh, history and uh, we should promote it and let our younger generation and the public, you know, the general public know about that. Just a short walk from the museum, another gem is hidden behind these walls. Lansu Chinese Garden is a 12.8 million authentic replica of China's famous Suzhou Gardens. It was also built with money raised by Portland's Chinese American community. Along with the museum, it is a symbol of the sense of pride Chinese Americans have of their culture and heritage, as well as their unity and determination to help Portland's Chinatown overcome the challenges it faces. CNA, Portland, Oregon.